It's Wednesday, May 18th. Even more high school state meets this week and NCAA conference championship meets. And hey, we've got not one, not three, but two USA running circuit races to recap this week. Most news I've had to cover in a while. All coming at you this week in Runner Space Live. Well, that's right, folks. We are into the championship portion of the season. The Diamond League meets are underway. Spring has officially sprung. You know, you can just feel it in the air. What is going on out there? Oh, look at that. Hey, guys, what's going on? No, no. Give it another try, little guy. <laughs> there you go. Did you know that ducks lay about 8 to 13 eggs? How many little ducklings can you count? Ducklings are precocial. That means they can swim basically as soon as they hatch. Oh, there they go. See you later, friends. Well, hey, that was fun and educational. It's the Awkward Video of the Week. <laughs> Now that's awkward. A lot of news this week, so we're jumping right into it. The Runner, Runner Space, Space Rundown. Rundown. Here we go. It's time for your runnerspace.com slash Nike Hub race time photos of the week. As always, keep submitting and you might see yours on next week's show. The Runner Space Network side of the week is runnerspace.com slash 401 series. This is the website of three distance-oriented track meets located in Ontario, Canada, known as the 401 Distance Series. Check it out for all the info on the three meets as well as videos and news. The series kicks off on May 21st in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. And now, time for our weekly Nike Track Nationals update. If the competition ended today, these are the teams that would make it to the championship meet at Hayward Field on June 25th. On the guy's side, still Vista Marietta of California on top, picking up another 87 points this week. And Loyola of California, not in a qualifying position last week, is now in the U.S. number two spot with 8,060 points. On the girls' side, Chandler Track Club of Arizona extends their national lead yet again. They increase their score by another 95 points this week to 8,371. Long Beach Poly of California still in second, and Hill House of Connecticut came out of nowhere to take over the Northeast lead and move all the way into the U.S. number three spot. And as for individuals, holy smokes, how does he do it? Nick Venna had an enormous throw last week in the shop, but, but an even enormouser throw this week. I think, yes, that's good for the highest point score in the nation, but more on that in the high school rundown. On the girls' side, that 11-2-9 and the 100 from Octavius Freeman is still holding up, and Ashlyn Cuff and Haley Pierce join the mix in third and seventh, respectively, with a pair of fast 1600s. It's the high school rundown. Whoa, a lot of state meets this week, but I think I gotta kick it off in Texas. There were a lot of outstanding relays here. North Shore ran some very impressive relays, first in the 4x2 with a 124.45, and the other in the 4x1 with a 40.22. And as far as the girls' relays go, also running US leading time in the 4x2 was Garland. They ran a 136.52 to lead three other teams under 137, and the DeSoto relay team won the girls' 4x4 with another US leading time of 341.41. But the greatness didn't stop the relays, North Northside Warren's Gregory Coleman ran a U.S. leading 36-34 in the 300 hurdles. And other top U.S. marks came from Taylor Houston, who won the 200 in a 23-3-5, and Courtney Okolo of Smith, Texas, who won the 400 in a 53-7-9. And a pair of doubles from White Plains, New York at the Lopes Games. Ashlyn Cuff of Cornwall, New York, ran two U.S. leads with a 440 in the 1600, and she won the 3200 with a 956. Both of those are state records, and the 956-3200 is the number four time in U.S. history. The other fantastic double here came from Zavon Watt Watkins of Liverpool, New York. He won the 800 and 150.6 and won the 1600 and a 411.1. At the Arizona State meet, Billy Orman of Tuba City dominated the 1600, winning by six seconds in a 406.7 and got the distance double, dominating the 3200 with a U.S. leading 848. Elsewhere, Jenna Heyman of Illinois got the only six foot high jump in the nation thus far. Ajay Wilson of Neptune, New Jersey put up a U.S. number one 205.25 in the 800. And lastly, we thought throwing over 73 feet in the shot put was good last week, and it is, but Nick Finn had just improved upon that, tagging on over another 
two feet. He threw a huge personal best to 75 feet, nine inches. That is number three all time. Actually, one more thing. At the Oklahoma 6A state meet, multi-event star Gunnar Nixon got a quadruple, winning the 110 hurdles, the 300 hurdles, the high jump, and the long jump. It's the College Pro Rundown. It is NCAA Conference Meet Weekend. Let's start with the Pac-10 Conference. Teams first, the Oregon men and the number three ranked Oregon women swept the team titles for the second year in a row. Close battle on the women's side as they beat out Arizona by only four and a half points. Oregon had incredible performances from two freshmen. First, 19-year-old English Gardner set an American junior record in the 100, running an 11.03. And the other also in the sprints from freshman Michael Berry. He ran a 44.91 in the 400 to break a 51-year-old school record. Also, Oregon's Matt Centrowitz won the 50 for the third year in a row with a 341.7, and Jordan Assay won the 1500 and 5000. And of course, Jeshua Anderson of Washington State won his fourth straight Pac-10 title in the 400 hurdles. And another team sweep at the Big 12 champs from Texas A&M. Of course, the Texas A&M women had a fantastic 4x1, winning with a 42.90. Notable performances, a freshman from Kansas, Diamond Dixon, won the 400 and a 51.55. That ties the NCAA leading time. Oklahoma's Rakeem Salam won the 200, also with the NCAA leading 20.05. On to the SEC Conference, where the Arkansas saw men took the team title. They were led by an incredible triple from Dorian Ulrey, who won the 800-1500 and was fourth in the 5000. And the Florida men ran an NCAA leading 38-53 to win the 4x1. And the LSU women won the team title. And the second stop in the Diamond League series was this weekend in Shanghai. Chinese hurdler Lu Zhang, who spent the last few years dealing with on-again, off-again injuries, made an amazing comeback here, running a 1307 to beat out the American record holder David Oliver. Kenyan Vivian Cherry ran a world lead in the 5000 with a 1431. She won by only a second where the top three ran under 14. And another world lead came from the men's 1500, where Kenyon Nixon Chip Sabo ran a world leading 331.4 and beat out the Olympic champ Asbel Kiprop, who was second with a 331.7. It's a road racing rundown. Tragic news this week as 24-year-old Kenyan and Olympic marathon champion Sammy Wanjaru died on Sunday after falling from a balcony at his home. The incident followed a domestic dispute and the cause of the fall is still under investigation. Wanjaru was at one point a world record holder in the half marathon and won his last race in October with a memorable performance at the Chicago Marathon. Of the six marathons he completed, he won five and his slowest one was his debut which he won in a 2.06.39. But that doesn't even scratch the surface of his accomplishments. He will truly be missed. Now changing gears a bit, we got a few USA running circuit races to talk about. First off, with the Medtronic Twin Cities Mile in Minneapolis, Minnesota. On the men's side, he did it. David Torrance won his third USA Road Mile Championship here. He broke his own course record and the four-minute barrier, finishing with a 3.58.4. Aaron Braun of Flagstaff, Arizona was second with a 4.01.2, and Craig Miller of Madison, Wisconsin was third with a 4.01.3. U.S. Half Marathon record holder Ryan Hall ran his first competitive mile since 2005 and finished last. His wife, Sarah Hall, won the women's race, also in a course record time with a 4.30.8. Heather Camp of Minneapolis, Minnesota was second in a 436.3, and Gabrielle Anderson, also a Minnesotan, rounded out the top three at the 436.9. The other USA running circuit race was the U.S. 25K Championships, hosted by the Fifth Third River Bank Run in Grand Rapids, Michigan. On the men's side, it was a dominant performance by 29-year-old Fernando Cabada of Boulder, Colorado. This is his second U.S. 25K title as he got his first one five years ago. Josh Moan of Minneapolis, Minnesota was second, 28 seconds back with a 116.09, and Andrew Carlson rounded out the top three with a 116.35. Molly Pritz, a 23 year of Rochester Hills, Michigan, got her first U.S. title ever in an even more dominant performance. She won by three minutes in 125.38, and Dom McMahon was second in 128.38. As with all USA Running Circuit races, follow the action at usarunningcircuit.com. You can even check the standings as each race is scored Grand Prix style, and an overall winner will be crowned when the circuit is complete. Lastly, I can't leave these out. The Healthy Kidney 10K run in Central Park, New York was won in a course record time by Kenyan Leonard Komen, who ran a 27.35. And the women's race was taken by none other than 23-year-old Ethiopian. Ethiopian Buzanish Deba. She ran a 33-39 to win by 2 minutes and 34 seconds. And the Bupa Great Manchester 10K in Britain was won by His Majesty Ethiopian Haley Gibber Selassie in a 28-10. That is his fourth win here. Well, that does it for this week, you know? Gotta be honest, getting pretty sick of this fickle spring weather here in Eugene, Oregon. Beautiful one moment, rainy the next. But you know, I guess that's what makes it so green. Carter Space Live, signing out.